Om Namo Narayanai Jai Swami Narayan Namaste. It is a beautiful sunny day out, even though I have the curtain closed for the camera, and it is just a great day to read some scripture. So we are going to read today chapter 35 and 36 of the Ramayana. Chapter 35 is called Samantra Chastises Kaikeyi. After that, the charioteer, Sumantra, sighing frequently, shaking his head, crushing one palm on another, grinding his teeth with eyes turned to the anger, leaving out his natural color, and overcome with inordinate grief due to his observing the reaction of King Dasartha, pierced the mind of Kakeli with his replies, which were like incomparable and inauspicious thunderbolts which were capable of breaking her vital parts. O oh, lady, your husband, the king, who has been forsaken by you, is the lord of all movable and immovable things of this world, and I feel that there is nothing you are incapable of doing. I think you are a killer of your husband, who is an exterminator of a clan, and are causing great grief due to your acts to the Indra-like king, who is unshakable like a mountain and unperturbed like an ocean. Your husband, the king, giver of all your needs, should not be insulted by you, because for a woman the desire of a husband is of greater value than ten million sons. After the death of the king, the princes would obtain the kingdom according to their age. So why do you want to break this tradition in the case of Rama, the lord of the Ikshivaku dynasty? Let your king Bharata become the king of this earth, and we will all go to the place where Rama goes. No Brahmin will feel worthy to stay in your country because of what you are intending to do is that insulting. Definitely, all of us will take the path that Rama takes. O oh, lady, with relations, all Brahmas and virtuous young men abandoning you always, what pleasures will you get out of getting the kingdom? O oh, Kaikeli, why do you desire to such a great insult? I am greatly surprised by what you are intending to do, and when this lady is putting an end to the tradition, why does not the earth split right away? When you are bent upon banishing Rama to the forest, it is a great wonder that you are not destroyed by the fearful staff-like word, shame, which is a flame created by great Brahma Rishis. By cutting a mango tree by an axe, and by nurturing a neem tree by irrigating it with milk, one does not get sweet fruits. I think that your nobility of birth comes out of that of your mother, since it is a well-known saying that honey does not flow from the neem tree. Formerly we have heard about the unworthy, stubborn habit of your mother. One boon giver has bestowed on your father an extraordinary boon by which he could understand the language of speech of all horizontal moving beings. One day, near his bed, an ant Jurumbana was talking to his father, and your greatly lustrous father, understanding the meaning, laughed exceedingly. And then your mother, who got angry because of that, and who desired the noose of death, addressed him and said, O oh, soft-natured king, I am desirous of knowing why you laugh now. And then the king told the lady, O oh, lady, if I tell you that, I would die instantly without a doubt whatsoever. Your mother, addressing your father, who was the king of Kakalia, said, Do not ridicule me, but tell it whether you are alive or dead. Hearing the words of his wife, Kakeya, the king of the earth, told of this to the great one who conferred on him the boon. Thereafter, that good man who conferred the boon said, Do not do that. Let her live or die. That king who heard the advice of that man of Dharma with a pleasant mind repudiated your mother and moved freely like King Kubera. O oh, lady who only sees evils, like that you are also moving in the path of bad people out of unfair persistence, out of great desire. To me, the generally told saying that sons resemble their fathers and daughters resemble their mothers seems to be true. Do not imitate those traits of your mother. After understanding the opinion of the king, follow them and protect the people. Being encouraged by sinners, do not attribute unrighteousness to your husband who shines like the king of devas and is the protector of the world. O oh, Kaikeli, 
that faultless king Tasartha, who has eyes like lotus petals and who is prosperous, will not make the promises given to you as miss. Let the valiant Rama, who is the eldest, who is generous, who is expert in doing his work, who is the protector of his own dharma and who is the protector of all beings, be crowned as king. If Rama goes to the forest, leaving his father here, a blame of yours would be spread among great people. Let Rama rule the kingdom, and you get rid of your mental afflictions, for no one else resides in this city who is as competent as Rama is to rule. When Rama becomes the Yuvaraja, the great archer King Nasartha will retire to the forest, remembering the custom of our earlier people. Like this, Sumantha the charioteer chastised Kakere using harsh as well as gentle words in the presence of the king, aimed to make her sorry, and he stood with folded palms. That lady, though, was not perturbed in the least, and did not feel remorse, and the change of color on her face could not be noticed. Let's end chapter 35. Chapter 36 is called King Desartha's Proposal. Then King Desartha, the Sagayan of the Ikshavaku clan, becoming afflicted by his oath, with tears, breathing with difficulty, again and again told these words to Sumatra. O oh, charioteer, immediately arrange the four divisions of the army, along with precious gems, to escort Rama to his journey to the forest. Also, arrange pretty ladies with musical voices and courtesans, very rich people, traders, well-spread men as well as sons of people of the army to accompany him and make it graceful to those who depended on rama for a living and to those who were companions in sports of rama give them a lot of compensation and make them participate in the procession too let important weapons people of the city carts conductors in the forest and fowlers follow that son of the kakushla follow that sun that glorious rama by hunting for deer and elephants drinking the honey of the forest and seeing pretty rivers he would think of the kingdom let both the entire contents of my granary as well as that of the treasury follow rama when he goes to the desolate forest performing sacrifices in holy places liberally giving fees to brahmins rama will live in the forest along with the sages the greatly heroic Bharata would look after Adyotya and let all auspicious things for enjoyment be furnished to Rama. Thus spoke King Dasartha. When he was talking like this, fear gripped Kakeli, and her mouth dried up, and the voice became choked. That Kakeli, who was now scared and dejected, and with a dried up face, spoke to the king. O oh, simple one, Bharata will not accept a deserted kingdom, devoid of wealth and impossible to be enjoyed, which is like the wine whose essence has evaporated. Hearing the shameless and horrible words spoken by Kakeli, the king told the following words to the broad-eyed one. O oh, enemy of mine, Kakeli, you fasten to me the yoke, and I am pulling forward. O oh, ungentlemanly lady, why are you prodding me further? Why did you not stop me at the beginning itself? That blessed lady Kakei, hearing the very angry words of the king, became doubly enraged and addressed him. In your clan itself, King Sagara prevented the crowning of his eldest son, Asamangja, and similar to that, Rama also has to go. When she said this to the king, he could say only one word, shame and all the people felt ashamed, but Kakeli did not notice it. An aged favored minister of King Desartha named Siddhartha, who was a very good person, addressed Kakeli and said these words. The wicked Asamangja used to catch hold of children playing on roads, throw them all in the river Sarayu, and used to amuse himself this way. Seeing this, all the people of the city were angry, and said to the king, O oh, enhancer of the prosperity of the kingdom, choose either us or Asamanja. Then the king asked, What is the reason for this fear? And hearing the words told to them, the citizens replied, That one with a lunatic mind throws our young sons in the river due to his mad nature, and becomes supremely happy because of it. That king, hearing the words of his citizens with an intention of pleasing them, banished his son. 
then placing his son along with his wife and with all their needs in a chariot the king ordered that as long as they are alive they shall be banished then that evil doer wandering about in all directions with a plough and a basket spent his time digging the mountain forts that was why that king who was an upholder of dharma banished his son what sin has Rama committed so that he should be vanished like this? None of us see even a little of the bad qualities of Rama, which are like the stain on the moon. But, lady, if you find any fault in Rama, you please tell us, and then we will happily banish Rama. But banishing someone who is engaged in the good path of Dharma would even destroy the splendor of Indra enough do not cause obstruction to the prosperity of rama and it is also necessary for you to save yourself by being criticized by the world the king after hearing the words of siddhartha with a progressively failing voice tinged in grief told kakei i know you will disregard these words as you do know what is good for you or to me as you have adopted a vile wicked path forsaking the right path after giving up pleasures, kingdom, and wealth, I will go today with Rama and you along with King Bharata for a long time may enjoy this kingdom. Thus ends chapter 36. It's truly amazing how everyone comes out in the defense of Rama, except Rama, and except Kaikeyi, who of course can't. It's too late. She's already turned to the dark side. Darth Vader would be proud. But the calamity is just overwhelming, and everybody sees it. As I said in an earlier video, there is an ethics essay just waiting to happen here if it hasn't already. And with that thought, I will say thank you for watching as always. Jai Shri Krishna, Jai Shri Swami Narayan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.